All right, at the top of your page, rational expression. So some of you are already filling in the blanks. Good. A rational expression is a ratio. That's the root word we talked about, rational numbers. But because it's an algebraic fraction or a rational expression, the expression means we're going to deal with algebra. So it's the ratio of two polynomials. And below it says to recall from unit one that a rational number is real. Okay, the reals broke down into the rationals and irrationals. Over the set of real numbers, an algebraic fraction is defined only for those values of the variable that do not yield or give us a denominator of what? Zero. Okay, so if it's always, there'll be some questions that say, for which of the following fractions is the fraction always defined? So that means there's no way to make the denominator equal to zero. There's no way to do it. There's no value of x you could plug in that would make the bottom of that fraction equal to zero. Okay? So here are the steps. Some of you will be able to see this, so please again don't yell it out. You'll be able to see this just by looking at it, okay? But if you forget, here are the steps to determine for which value of x the fraction is undefined. So step number one, set the denominator equal to zero and then solve for x or whatever the variable is, okay? What happens though, so when the denominator, I'm going to use den, when the denominator is a monomial, which is like number one, do you really need to set it equal to zero? No. If you did, it would be x equals zero. So it's asking you what could you substitute to make the variable equal to zero. This could also be, so these two have the same, we'll add some more that have, again, x equals zero makes it undefined. I'm going to give you some more where x equals zero is the answer. It could be something like three over x squared. If you substitute zero, zero squared zero, the bottom zero. You could have, so let's say, or 6 over negative 5x squared. Plug in the 0. 0 squared is 0, and 0 times negative 5 is 0. So let's finish that statement. When the denominator is a monomial, x equals 0 is the answer. So x equals 0 makes fraction undefined. And I'm going to abbreviate. So now let's look at number two. Going back to the directions, because I don't think I highlighted that when we started number one, is to tell the values of the variable, if any, for which the fraction is not defined or undefined. So number two has two minus x. So you have to be asking yourself, because we don't care what the numerator is. A fraction is undefined when the denominator is zero. So this is where some of you will be able to do this in your head. Two minus what equals zero. So if you don't know it right away, you can solve for x. So if we do it in our head, two minus two is zero, or you can add x, and you get x equal to two. So every single question where it says, what value for x is going to make it undefined? You can ignore the top. We don't care about the numerator. It's when we divide by 0 that we get the error. So what do we add 6 to to get 0? If you can do this in your head, x is, Ryan? Negative 6. If you can't do it in your head, take this, x plus 6, set it equal to 0, subtract 6, and x equals negative 6.
Okay? So if you can't do it in your head, then follow these steps here. Set the denominator equal to zero and solve. Moving on to four. We're getting a little bit harder. And I know we're looking at when the fraction's undefined. We don't need to look at the numerator. What do I multiply two by and add eight to get zero? When solving for x, subtract eight. 2x is equal to negative 8, divide by 2, and x is equal to negative 4. Number 5, 3 times what minus 1 equals 0? Well, I'm going to make, I have to make 3 smaller in order to subtract 1. So this really must be a 1 because 1 minus 1 is 0. So some of you will be able to see what do I multiply 3 by to get 1. But if you don't, just don't spend too much time on it. Set it equal to 0 and solve. So add the 1. 3x equals 1. Divide by 3. And x equals 1 third. If you go back and check, when you plug it in, one-third of three is one, and one minus one is zero. Number six, x squared plus four equals zero. Can anyone see what number we could plug in for x, square it, and then add four to get zero? So if I set it equal to zero and I solve, I would subtract four first and x squared equals negative four. Can you ever square a number to get a negative answer? No. It's not, we talked about up here that, where do we talk about it? A rational number is real. So right now, you have let yet to learn a number set called the imaginary numbers. So at this point in the year, we cannot take the square root and solve, okay? So here, this fraction would always be defined when we're talking about, whoops, real numbers. So number six, you can star it, circle it. This is always defined. Because you can never square a number, another way to think about it, you can never square a number to get an answer that's negative, correct? No, because anytime we square, whether it be the positive 2 or negative 2, we end up with a positive answer. So that's always defined. This one, though, because it's the square that I'm going to take away, I can square a number and then take 25 away and get 0. So anyone know what that number would be? Five. Is there another number? Again, we have to find every possible answer. So it's not only just five, and if you actually solve the quadratic, it'd be x plus five, x minus five, with the root of negative five and five. But yes. So anytime you have a dots expression, x is going to equal two numbers. So if it was, say, one over x squared minus 9, what would x equal? 3 and negative 3. So we can put plus and minus 3. If it was 1 over x squared minus 4, x can equal what to make it undefined? 2 and negative 2. Anytime it's dots. Okay? Last one. I don't think anyone's going to be able to see this in their head, so we really do need to set it equal to 0 and factor to find the roots. Again, we're not concerned with the numerator. Factors of a positive 25 that combine to a negative 10. So x times x, it is 5 times 5. And what would the sign have to be, Alex? Negative. So I end up with a root of 5 and another root that's the same, that's 5. You don't have to write it twice, we can just say x is equal to 5. In the box it says, like all rational numbers, a rational expression is in simplest form if the numerator and denominator 
have no common factors except for one. Okay, so to give you an example, um, x plus 5 over x squared plus 25. This is in simplest form. We can't factor this, right? Well, to simplify on the back, all we do, I have the steps at the top, to reduce a fraction such as 4 eighths, which is equivalent to 1 half, the first thing we do is factor. And then we divide out the GCF. More or less, when we start to get into operations, what a restriction is in numerical terms is saying we cannot simplify a fraction if it was, say, 1 over 0, correct? We can't simplify that. We can't simplify. 12 over 0. We can simplify something, though, that was 12 over 24. But what this is saying is you can't simplify a fraction. You can't do anything with that because your denominator is 0. So what we do is we restrict x. And all the restriction is is those values that make an undefined. So it's those values that make the fraction undefined. And in the box there, what is A minus B divided by B minus A, what is that equal to? From the warm up? Negative 1. Even if it was something as crazy such as X squared Y squared minus 24 divided by 24 minus X squared Y squared. As long as it's both subtraction with the same things that you're subtracting in opposite order, you still get negative 1. Number 1, the directions say to simplify each expression and then also state the restrictions. So to simplify, we factor. Can we factor 8x? Remember to always check for GCF first. Can't factor a monomial, so I bring that over. The expression 8x plus 16 has a GCF of... 8. To always check the smaller number and if that divides into the larger then that's the greatest. So it's 8 times x plus 2 in order to distribute to get 8x plus 16. Now, so that's step number 1. Step number 2, divide out also means to cancel. So I cancel those common <coughs> factors. And the only common factor that I can cancel, because factors are connected by multiplication, so 8 times x and then 8 times the sum, the only ones I can cancel are the 8s. So final answer is x over x plus 2. The restriction. Well, I'll show you a shortcut with these. You can look at this and set it equal to zero and solve, or just look at your factor with x in it. What value of x can you plug in to make that equal to zero? What plus two is zero? Negative two. So x can't equal a negative two. That would be the restriction. So the answer is in orange. The restriction is in green. Number two. GCF for 10 and 5 is 5. So I factor out the 5, and it's be 5 times 2 is 10, and then minus x to get the 5x. Divided by GCF for 15 and 30 is 15. 15 times x minus 2. Now, um, we can reduce 5 fifteenths to numerically that would be one third, five goes into five ones, goes into 15, three times. Now these are not the same, so I just can't cancel them out. If you guys are really crazy and you're canceling, you really just scribble it out and darken it, you might want to do your restriction first. So what can x be here? Positive two, because two minus two is zero. So if I go back and I cancel these out, 
what is the same binomial in a different order with subtraction? When I divide, what do we get? Negative 1 from the top. When it's subtraction, the same terms but different order, it's negative 1. So that reduces, and you put the negative 1 up top. Now to multiply straight across, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then 3 would be the answer. So negative 1 third, with the restriction still keeping that circled in green, x not equal to 2. So go ahead and start and just we'll go ahead and factor questions three and four. So just factor your numerator and denominator. So now that we have it factored, let's do the restrictions first before we start crossing things out. And please don't cross it out on an assessment too much because I won't be able to see what was underneath that. So what's the restriction for this factor? X cannot be equal to what? If I wanted to make X plus three zero, what would I have to plug in for x? A negative 3. So negative 3 plus 3 equals 0. So x can equal negative 3 or what minus 1 is 0? Positive 1. So there's the restriction. Now the answer is what I get after I cancel out all my common factors. So cancel this with this. And what's in the numerator when I cross it out? This is still a fraction with x minus 1 in the bottom. But my question is, I cancel out the x plus 3 in the numerator. What's there when I cancel it out? A 1. So it's 1 over x minus 1. Let's do the restriction over here. 5x minus 1. We probably can't do that in our head. So we off to the side, 5x minus 1, set that equal to 0, add the 1. 5x equals 1, divide by 5, and x is 1 fifth. So restriction means instead of an equal, I have a not equal. x can equal 1 fifth. The answer? Cancel out common factors, cancel, cancel. This is really 5x plus 1 over a 1, because there's a 1 there when I cancel it out. But anything divided by 1 is itself. Okay, so we went ahead and I gave you the answers for 6 and 7. We're going to do 5 and 8 together. So looking at 5, is there a GCF for 3x squared and 6x? 3. Not only do they have a 3 in common, but they also have an x. So it's going to be 3x times x plus 2. And the denominator... GCF for x cubed and 4x. Since I realize that this is the difference and it's got a perfect square, I'm going to pull out the GCF over here because this is x times x squared minus 4, and x squared minus 4 is dots. So I wrote that there because I don't have much room left. It's going to be x times dots factors x plus 2 times x minus 2. I'm actually glad... You guys pick this one to go over together because there's how many factors in the denominator? How many factors? How many things am I multiplying in the denominator? Well, I'm multiplying this times this times that. There's three. This is different. So for the restriction, x can equal what for this one? When it's one term, a monomial. From the front page, what makes a monomial zero?